Newhouse. I want to talk to you about the bones in the feet. Frequently I'm asked uh, about foot bones. I have here a foot model um, and you can see there are lots of little tiny bones in our feet. Uh, for example, our toe bones, our big toe has two bones in the toe. These are called the phalanges. We have the proximal phalanx and the distal phalanx. The distal phalanx is right beneath the toenail and on each of our lesser toes, just like on our fingers, you have different knuckles. We have knuckles in our toes, so we have phalanges that make up the toe bones. Uh, again, it's the proximal, the middle, and the distal phalanx. Moving back, we have our metatarsals. So we have our first metatarsal, which is behind the big toe. We have the second, third, fourth, and fifth metatarsal. These bones are deeper in the middle of the foot, and our long bones, frequently they can be injured with some sort of uh, traumatic injury. If you have forefoot pain, it typically involves the metatarsals. Going back further into the middle of the foot, which is really just in front of our ankle, we have lots of little tiny bones which are very important for side-to-side uh, -side motion, walking across uneven ground or gravel. Um, you don't get a lot of motion, but you get just enough to keep things flexible and moving, and when one of these bones is injured, it causes pain throughout the entire foot. So we have the cuneiforms, there's three cuneiforms. Behind the base of the first metatarsal, we have the medial cuneiform, or the first cuneiform. Behind the second metatarsal, we have the intermediate cuneiform, or the second cuneiform. Um, then we have the third metatarsal with the lateral cuneiform, the third cuneiform. And behind the fourth and fifth, there's one bone that has a joint surface to both of the metatarsal bases, and this is the cuboid. Uh, cuboid um, is on the outside of the foot. Um, going back further, we have our heel bone, which is the largest bone in the foot. Um, between the heel bone and the ankle bone, we have what's called the subtalar joint. That's the joint that does give us the side-to-side -side motion. If you're going to walk on uh, uneven ground on a roof or on um, a curb uh, or on a balance beam, you're going to use your subtalar joint for that motion. Above the subtalar joint is the talus. The talus articulates or um, is involved with motion at the ankle joint. And here you can see the ankle joint, which is the ankle bone. This is the bump that you see on the inside of your ankle. And on the outside of your ankle, you have the lateral malleolus. Um, which is off the fibula, um, and this is the, the ankle bone that's on the outside. Um, and this, I think I failed to mention, is called the tibia. The bump on the outside of the ankle, or inside of the ankle, is the medial malleolus. So when you have an ankle fracture, what it is you're fracturing typically is the malleoli. You're breaking these little bumps on either side, which are part of the ankle joint, and that motion that you get moving your foot up and down is affected with. Um, an injury to the ankle joint. Now two other little bones that are frequently neglected underneath the big toe joint on the head of the first metatarsal there's these two little bumps called sesamoid bones. Sesamoid bones are very important in moving the big toe joint up and down um, so often they're forgotten but they are very important little bones. So there you have a summary of the bones of the foot. I hope you find that useful and uh, there'll be a quiz at the end of the